Hi, it's Clark. Today on the Enough is Enough series, I'm gonna talk about money, how it can lose its value over time and why you need to invest it to have it grow and work for you. As you know, in this series, we try to talk about how to live a more intentional life. We're focusing on five things. How to define your version of enough and define what you need to do to get there. A little bit on investment theory, because likely your method of enough might need you to save up while you're young. So how that whole stock market thing works or whatever other version of investment you decide to do. Some uh, little talk about habits and motivations that can help us just plain want to do this and do it in a more pleasant way. Some real concrete steps that we can follow that will get us there. And most importantly, maybe building a community so we have friends that can support us in our uh, endeavors. So today we're gonna talk about money. Well, is this money? I don't know, what is money? This is a piece of paper and it represents a dollar. And the thing it represents is kind of defined by the paper. It can also be electronic, but it kind of boils down to paper. Problem is, it's paper. It's really handy stuff. If I do some work, I do something productive, Someone can give me some of these and I feel like I've been paid and I, because I know that if I offer these to someone else, they'll produce something for me or give me something of value. So that's really good and it's really handy and I'm really glad that governments print these things for us because you know, carrying around a bunch of chickens and trading in chickens is very awkward. Problem is governments control these things and governments are run by politicians and politicians want votes. And they have this habit of buying votes with these. They make policies that spend a lot of these that they don't actually have. And what it does is it takes a little bit away from everybody else's. So if they spend a hunk of money they don't have, your dollar starts to look like, I don't know, like that. And they spend some more. And as time goes by, your dollar's not worth as much. So that's a dollar, good and bad. Another thing you can do with your money though, you can buy parts of companies that make products. Uh, this is Coca-Cola. I don't drink the stuff. I understand it's way healthier if you add rum. So I'm gonna try that. But uh, it's gonna represent the company that makes this stuff. And there's lots of people in the whole world that buy this. They market it, they make people think they want it. Um, they produce it and they sell it for a profit. If you use some of your money that you got from doing something useful to somebody else. And instead of just spending it or holding on to it, you buy a little tiny part of this company or any other company. When this company turns a profit, a little part of that profit goes to you. When this company reinvests in itself so that it can make more of its product, the value of what you uh, purchased gets bigger. So in short, the stock that you buy gets more value over time and every year you're gonna get a hunk of money back just for holding it. And all of that is a way of turning this, which kind of disappears into this, or the stock, <laughs> which becomes of higher and higher value if time goes on. And that's the heart of investing. If we take this dollar that we got 30 years ago and we just put it away in a safe spot, Every year inflation hurts it a bit, and over 30 years, it's only worth half of what it was. If we took that dollar and we gave it to a bank, our local bank, and put in to a savings account, and let's say that savings account over those 30 years made the same money that the best savings account right now is making, what would you have? Well, the account itself kind of broke even with inflation, so you'd still have basically a dollar, but that's all you'd have. The other choice, investing it. Well, you can invest in lots of stuff. You can invest in precious metals. Lots of people are into putting things into gold. I think that's a little reactionary for my, my style, but it's out there. You could invest in real estate. Uh, that's pretty cool. I think it could do really well. I think it takes a lot of work and you have to trust renters. And I don't know, I'd rather not because I want to travel. I don't want to sit around and watch things. So it just doesn't work for me. You could invest in like antiques and art. That could do really well. If you know what you're doing with antiques and art, probably one of the better things to do. I don't know a thing about it. Or you can invest in the stock market. 
Uh, the stock market is something I've been investing in. I feel pretty comfortable with it. it it's volatile and sometimes do what does well and sometimes it does poorly. But if you look at the long curve, it generally goes up. And I'll go into more detail on that in another video. Let's uh, look at uh, what happens if you invest this dollar in the stock market. Well, if 30 years ago you took the $1 and you bought some stock, let's say an index fund. So it's not just the Coca-Cola, but it's a, a, a mixture of all kinds of different stocks, all kinds of different companies that you're owning a tiny piece of. During that time, there'll be times when you're doing really well and times when you're doing not so well and really well because the last 30 years have been pretty volatile. There were two big crashes. But still, at the end of this, after inflation, your dollar would be worth four and a half dollars. It would more than quadruple. And that's a great thing. Uh, it allows you to make money off your money. Okay, so the market looks really good. You know, why wouldn't you do the market? Honestly, I don't know why you wouldn't do it, but I know what you should think about. The risk. Um, anything could happen where the, uh, the, the dollar in your mattress, assuming you don't end up with bugs eating it or your house burning down, pretty much you're still going to have the pieces of paper. The interest rate on the savings, as long as it's kind of that, you know, breaks even. There's very little risk there. The market could have a, a terrible time. It could have a great time. In average, it goes up. Now, in the process of going up, it has volatility. It goes up and down. And some people like to really try to make money on the market by saying, it's going down now. I'm selling early because I expect it to go down. And now it's really low, so I'm going to buy. With all that, all that cash that I got from selling, I'm going to now reinvest it. And then when it goes up, I'm going to sell again. And if you play that right, oh, you can make so much money. But it's hard to do that right. Generally, when the market's doing well, day traders are all bragging about how good they're doing. When the market's doing poorly, they, they seem to be a little quieter about it. Uh, basically, everybody's a genius on a, on a bull market, they say. So my idea is to simply invest on a regular basis whenever you can. Every paycheck, put some money in. Don't even worry if it's high that week. Just put it in because it's high is going to be low compared to 10 years from now when you might need it or 20 or 30. And just keep feeding it. Don't even think about it. Just let it keep feeding into that account. Let's say you just took, instead of a dollar upright, we took a dollar every day for those 30 years. First one, the mattress. Every day we shove a dollar into the bag and uh, see what we have. At the end of 30 years, we have like $8,100 in value. Remember, it depreciated during that time. It inflated away a bit. If we were to use the uh, savings account approach, well, we have $11,800. Better but, you know, not great. Let's say we took a dollar a day and we just kept throwing it into the stock market, adjusted for inflation. After 30 years, we have like $22,000. It really adds up. Uh, and it's those early dollars that had more of an impact. You know, the last day you put a dollar in before you looked at your balance, you really only got a dollar from that. But that first dollar that went in, that was worth a lot more. So you need to invest early. Okay, let's up that a bit. I mean, a dollar a day. That's pretty silly, right? I'm sure you could afford at least, let's say, $5 a day. Let's say instead of going to Starbucks and buying a coffee on the way to work, you just waited till you got to work and had a free cup of coffee, or you had coffee with your breakfast that you made yourself. Much, much cheaper. Let's just say that could be a $5 savings a day. Even if you don't drink coffee, that's $150 a month. It's not ridiculous. You know, you could save up $150 a month, I'm sure. So we put in $5 a day. Uh, again, uh, the uh, money that we just hold in our mattress, not so well. We got like $40,000. Savings account, same kind of a deal. But $5 saved a day in the stock market over the last 30 years with all of its dips and everything, leaves you with over $100,000 available. Now that's significant. Think about the happiness that your fancy coffees gave you. You're gonna not have those. But you know, if you have it every day, it just becomes the normal day, nothing special. After 30 years of your nothing special coffees, just your new inflation of lifestyle, did it 
give you enough happiness to be worth $100,000 in the bank, $100,000 that's there to support you if you need it, $100,000 that's growing and making money for you, 100,000 freedom chips that are gonna let you do the life that you want earlier? I think not. These graphs can be pretty cool to play with. Uh, they can help you model your future. You'll find other things like them around on the internet. My wife, Emily, put them together. They're like a spreadsheet. You can try all kinds of numbers. What if you say, oh geez, I can afford 20 bucks a day, uh, $600 a month. I can put that away right now. Let me uh, see what would happen if I did that. Well, do that. <laughs> You'll be surprised. We'll make uh, the Excel spreadsheets for this available on Patreon. So uh, take one of your saved dollars and send it our way. When you get these Excel spreadsheets, feel free to share them. If you're an organizer for one of the Enough is Enough groups, give them out to the members. We're just using Patreon as a way to get it out there. Take them and use them and enjoy. Thanks for watching the video today. I hope you see that if you collect money in your life, you gotta invest it. You can't just put it in a bag and you can't just put it in a savings account. It does you no real good. If you liked this video, please push the like button. When you push the like button, not only does it make us feel good, but it tells YouTube this is a likable video and I'd like to get the word out on this kind of stuff. I don't think Americans understand how to invest or humans on the planet. We've got a lot of people watching these videos from all over the world. If you've got some other ideas, uh, some thoughts on the subject, put it in the comments. We'll all discuss it down there. If this topic interests you, I suggest you look down in the description below and fill out the survey. You can join a local Enough is Enough group in your city. Actual people that can support you and share ideas with you about how to live frugally, how to save now to live better later. Thanks so much for watching. Talk to you again soon. Bye from Temptress.